week nine of college football. Avery Miguel here. Um, first one we're going to talk about is LSU and Texas A&M. Avery, this is an exciting matchup. Both teams lost week one, but both teams went on a winning streak after that. I personally have more faith in LSU than Texas A&M in this game. I trust the quarterback from LSU more than the other quarterback. So, and LSU, and I feel that LSU's defense continues to get better. So I have LSU to win this game. I don't know what score, but I have LSU winning. As a matter of fact, I have LSU winning 27 to 23. Um, I, I think it could be close. Both teams are undefeated in the SEC. And considering that the uh, playoff format was introduced uh, a couple of days ago, kind of shapes how this game can play out for both for both teams. Uh, Mike Elko, he was actually uh, Coach Brian Kelly's defensive coordinator when he was at Notre Dame. So this is kind of an interesting game for both head coaches coaches as well uh brian kelly has moved forward to lsu in the past couple years it, it hasn't always gone to plan but i agree with you they both teams started off with a loss now they are in it to win it uh espn has this as a very even matchup too they have texas a&m at a 52.8 percent chance to win with lsu 47.2 they are playing at Texas A&M. They're playing at College Station. That could probably help Texas A&M a bit, but I agree with you. Garrett Nuss, um, uh, Nussmeyer, Nussmeyer, excuse me, 2,222 yards, 18 touchdowns, six interceptions. If he can curtail the interceptions, I can see LSU kind of taking this, but I agree with you. I, I think this is going to be a close game. The over-under is 51 and a half. I think Texas A&M may start off strong, but I think LSU is going to take over at the second half. A win for Texas A&M puts them in a good position for the playoff. Uh, ESPN had a really good article uh, about how the playoff format is going to work and it really entails how you finish when it comes to conference titles and it comes to your record in the conference. So Texas A&M winning this gives them a higher chance. LSU winning gives them a better chance overall considering their opponents later on in the season. But I I'm going to agree with you on this one. I'm going to go with LSU. I'm going to have the score a bit higher, and I'm also going to have it close. So I'm going to go LSU, Texas, LSU 30, Texas A&M 28. Fair enough. Um, that'll be an exciting game to watch on Saturday evening. Now, the other one that I can't wait to see, Notre Dame versus Navy. And the crazy thing about it is that and I'm jealous of it. It's going to be at MetLife Stadium. MetLife Stadium. And this is the second time that both Notre Dame and Navy will be facing each other at MetLife Stadium. I have a privilege of being there once. If I would have known in advance, I would have made a sacrifice to go. But I'll be watching it from my home because home is where the heart is. Um, 12 p.m. game. Notre Dame. I've always dominated Navy. They lead the series. Uh, I forgot the record, but they played each other so many times. I have it here for you. Because I had it earlier, but I don't have it with me in my hand. So what is it? What's the record? Uh, the record, Notre Dame leads the series 82-13 and one tie. And one tie. There we go. Yeah. I knew that it was one tie. However, we're in 2024. This is a different, different Navy team. They have a head coach who was the defensive coordinator before he got promoted as the head coach. Navy's defense is legit. This team is for real. And this is going to be the first time where Notre Dame's defense will be tested so far because they have a quarterback who is fearless. He, he doesn't make a mistake. 
They haven't turned the ball over since week one. Since week one. He only has one interception. I don't know, Avery. I like both teams. For this one, I would love to play the fifth, but I'm not going to do that. I have Notre Dame edging out Army. 34 to 32. That th this is a big deal for both teams, and I agree with you. Notre Dame and Navy they do have a history of playing each other. Um, my best friend, when he went to Notre Dame uh, many years ago, had the privilege of uh, attending a Notre Dame Navy game, but they actually played it in South Bend. But the interesting thing about this game being played at MetLife could be in favor of Navy. Right now, ESPN has Notre Dame winning this with a 91.9% .9 chance and Navy only like a 9% chance of winning. I understand it. They Navy gave, is a they service gave, school. Sorry to cut you off, Avery, but I was shocked when I saw the spread is 12 and a half in favor of Notre Dame. I'm like, I'm like, I mean, what kind of drugs are you guys taking? Like, no. I, I absolutely agree with you. At first, I thought when I first saw the the prediction and the spread, I thought it was probably because it was early in the week and I thought it would change later in the week. But no, you're 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 right. This is this is this is a weird dynamic when it comes to Notre Dame and Navy. And and like I said before, and like we said before, probably when it comes to the service schools, yes. Navy has played fantastic football. They average over 35 points a game. They held teams to less than 17 points a game. But this is the test for Navy. This is also a test for Notre Dame. Like I mentioned it before when we were talking about LSU and Texas A&M. This game works in both teams' favor when it comes to the playoff. Notre Dame does not have a conference. Notre Dame has to get in just based on record. So they need the win anyway. They already have one loss. Navy, they play in a conference. They play in a conference with Army. They need this win to boost their conference title chances as well as getting into the playoff. Also, the last time these two teams played in 2016 at MetLife, Navy won. So let's let's use history as our guide for this. I see this game as being close as well. I think Navy's defense is going to be tested, and I think that's going to be the difference maker. I think it's going to be a defensive, uh, um, a defensive stop or a a, a defensive, you know, uh, play that is gonna is gonna turn the tide of the game. Considering how we both feel about service schools, I'm gonna go against it. I'm gonna go against I'm I'm gonna go for Navy on this one. I'm gonna go for Navy on this one, but I'm gonna keep it, but it's gonna be close, but I'm gonna do low close. I'm gonna go Navy 24 and Notre Dame 22. But I think even though it's a neutral site, I think Navy wants to prove that they can be in not only the playoff picture, the playoff conversation, but do not count out them at all, especially since they are service school. Like I said, I mean, me personally, I don't mind whoever wins. Um, I just, I like and respect both teams. So I, this is one matchup that I won't be disappointed. As long as the refs, they don't screw things up in case there's a tie game. So, but uh, I just wish I would have knew in advance that they were going to play in my life stadium. I just wish I knew, but whatever. Um, it is what it is. Um, but last but not least, the AP poll. Um, Avery, this is no right or wrong answer. Do you think 
that Oregon will stay number one after this weekend? That's that, that's a that's a tough that's a tough answer because now that a playoff format and selection has been you know put on the table it's it's in writing it's in black and white this is it's going to be tough for Oregon because now we're at the point and interesting enough the two games we're talking about all the teams are ranked all the teams are ranked so being ranked means and we've discussed this before, you have to win your games and you have to win your games decisively. So if Oregon wants to stay at number one to definitely help their chances, at least at getting a bye in the playoff selection, they have to win the rest of their games decisively. And when I mean decisively, at least 20 points. And that's going to be basically like a bulk of those teams in the AP poll that are like one through 10. Because the way the selection is going to work is if you barely win, you can slide down. But if you win decisively, your chances of moving up are now greater. Again, conference games at this point now mean something. Before it was conference games and you beating a rival in your conference, you've played the same team, you know, multiple years, schools kind of look forward to it. Now, when you play in conference, you definitely have to win. And now that Oregon is in a different conference, their chances are, 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 are now like astronomically good, but the moment they lose, that can cause a big issue, but it's going to, it's going to be real tough. The following, the following games for Oregon, they, they, they have to win decisively. Even um, I was talking with my, my manager, you know, not, not, not to, not to throw a wrench, you know, for the university of Miami, but in the scenario of the playoff, Miami right now being six gets a buy. If the playoff were to start today, and it depends on their ACC ranking and their if they win the ACC championship. So, but Miami's following games, including them playing Florida State, they have to win decisively to stay atop their ranking as well as not need to slide. So, like I said, every team that's ranked 10 and up, you now have to win your games like decisively. And it was an issue years ago, you know, NCAA didn't like schools running up the score. Now you have no choice. You're going to get these high scoring games. Some of them are going to be real ugly, you know, where both teams are scoring like 40 points a game, you know, and then the winning team wins by like a field goal. But then you're going to get some of these scores that are going to be like 40 to 10, you know, or you're going to get some teams that maybe shut out a college team, which is rare, but you know, when, when defenses come to play, you're going to get that. So with Oregon now sitting atop, they now have to prove that they are, they have earned that number one spot, but like anything, the remaining are the games and all the teams that are ranked behind them. They know that any team that you play, don't count them out. We said it any given Saturday, any given Friday night, you know, if a team wants it, they're going to take their chances. And for the next few weeks going into how the playoff format is going to be shaped, how the AP poll may help and hurt some teams, it's going to be an interesting conversation in the next few weeks when we see it when we see it come to a, a more definitive shape and a def more definitive answer, because you have some great teams that we want to see, just like we said for, for a couple of years for doing this, we want some new blood and it's a, and, and now we, you have some teams that it would be great to see in this new playoff format. So it, it, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting thing. And also because of the playoff format, we could have 
more teams in it uh, because there is no um, um, there's no limit to conference. So you know, just like a couple years in the four team playoff, if there were a couple of SEC teams, people screamed and shout and what have you. But it's possible in the playoff format, you could see four or five SEC teams. You could see four or five Big 12 teams, four or five Big 10 teams. It's going to be interesting in the next few weeks. And I think the main thing is going to be in order to keep your ranking or move up, you need to win decisively. And if you barely win, good luck trying to get that back. 